just a side note, if it looks like I'm crying, it's not the fact that I am mourning the potential loss of TikTok. I just scratched my eye before we started filming and it just keeps like crying uncontrollably. So I'm very, very sorry. Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. So over the last year, there has been a standout character on political TikTok and his name is Jeff Jackson and he is a Democratic representative for North Carolina. He blew up on the app because of his candid straight to camera videos detailing current events and explaining how Congress and the federal government works to people on TikTok. And a lot of people have compared this to FDR's fireside chats. Like they're like, finally, we're getting unlimited access to a politician. He's being honest with us. He's being straight. We can rely on him. We trust him. And he is very much a Democrat, but he's not a radical lefty. He's a veteran, and even I enjoy some of his videos. He gave a very interesting behind the scenes perspective to those of us who don't get to know what goes on behind closed doors in our own government. But the most important thing to note, like I said, he gained the trust of the American voters more than anything. And last week, he apparently broke that trust. Before we get into this, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section episode. All right, so just to give you guys a baseline, get some context, let's start by watching one of Jeff's TikTok back when he was still everyone's favorite TikTok politician. It's about 2 a.m. and I just wanted to bring you up to speed on everything that's happened tonight because you're probably seeing a lot of headlines right now. Earlier tonight, there was an emergency Zoom call with several hundred members of Congress. It was convened by the Treasury Department and we were given about 15 minutes notice. It was literally on regular Zoom. I was sent a link, I clicked the link, and most of Congress was there. That's not normal but neither is the situation. The purpose of the meeting was to announce extraordinary steps that will now be taken to secure our financial system. You're going to hear from the president today, along with leaders of both parties, but here's what's happening. Three days ago, we had the second largest bank failure in American history. I mean, it's great. I mean, straight to camera, he's not talking down to anyone. He's giving interesting information. I would have had no idea that they met about this on freaking Zoom, that Nancy Pelosi was probably in her pajamas sitting up in bed trying to figure out what to do with our failing economy. It's just, it's interesting. And it seemed very honest. And honestly, that's just a bit worrisome because I think we've all seen the age of our Congress. Like, can they even be awake at 2 a.m.? I can't even be awake at 2 a.m. because of how comfortable my Helix mattress is. Guys, there is something truly magical about having a new mattress. And with my new Dusk Lux Helix mattress, it is like I discovered a whole new realm of comfort and rejuvenation. I mean, imagine sinking into a cloud every time you lay down. That is the sensation that Helix provides. Helix has harnessed years of extensive mattress expertise to offer a truly elevated sleep experience. And if you've not already checked out their Helix Elite collection, you need to. This collection includes six different mattress models, each tailored for specific sleep positions and firmness preferences. And if you're worried about buying a mattress online, you do not need to be. Helix has you covered with their sleep quiz. This innovative feature matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress, eliminating the need to settle for a mattress designed for somebody else. I took the Helix quiz back in the fall and it led me to their Dusk Lux mattress, which is a perfect match for my needs. I personally am a chronic side and stomach sleeper. I know that's bad for me. I know I'm gonna get roasted for that, but that's who I am. And this mattress makes sure that I stay comfortable, that I don't get all out of whack, that my back and spine stay supported. I could not recommend it more. Plus, Helix has a 10-year warranty and you can try it out for 100 nights risk-free. He'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but I guarantee you will. And if you're worried about the cost, their financing options and flexible payment plans ensure a great night's sleep is never too far away. So if you're ready to get the best sleep of your life, the time is now. Helix is offering my viewers 20% off of all mattress orders plus two free pillows. Just go to helixsleep.com slash Brett. Again, that is helixsleep.com slash Brett. This is their best offer yet for you guys. It will not last long. Go do it now because with Helix, better sleep starts now. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, nothing good has happened with our economy since that 2 a.m. meeting, so maybe they really should just go back to sleep. They should just let go and let the market figure it out. Anyway, moving on. Somebody commented and said, what politician does a video at 2 a.m. to ensure that the people are informed? Who cares about what party this guy is from? He's a true American. Somebody else said, thank you. Clear, honest, nonpartisan, and relevant. Thank you for this channel. Somebody else said, dude, you need to run for president. You need to. Like everyone, both parties, people on both sides of the aisle, loved this guy because he seemed like an honest man trying to do his best to inform the American people about a process that many people do not understand. Like we literally are so disconnected from our own government and it seemed like he was trying to change that. But all of this blew up in his face last week when TikTok became the focus of political discourse because Congress, as we talked about, is once again trying to control and curtail the app. And so obviously everyone turned to their favorite TikTok politician to give them the answers since this is literally his bread and butter. This is how he speaks to people. He relies on it. He's built a brand based on it. Obviously they were gonna get their information from him. And this is what he said. I don't think TikTok is gonna be banned. There was a bill to ban TikTok last year but it didn't pass. It didn't even get a vote. TikTok may be sold to another company, but it'll continue to operate. The bill that just passed the House was about telling TikTok they have to sell to another company. It hasn't passed the Senate, and I don't know if it will. 
If it does, TikTok will be sold for billions of dollars and will continue to operate. Why tell them they have to sell? The bottom line is there is a serious concern that the Chinese government can influence what you see on your For You page. They can tweak the algorithm in ways that may be helpful to them and harmful to us. It looks like they've done this around certain political subjects and they have the potential to do much more. There is also a concern about them having access to your data, but frankly, that applies to all social media companies. They are all sucking up your data. True. But what those other social media companies don't have is an adversarial government that can influence the algorithm to manipulate the content you're shown in ways that will help them politically. That's a difference and it's a big one. TikTok is owned by a company based in China and China has a national security law that gives its intelligence services a lot of power. So if those services show up at the door of TikTok and say, hey, you have to change the algorithm for American users in these specific ways, TikTok has to comply. The effect could be subtle, but persistent. We got a big example of how that power could be used last week, and it wasn't subtle. A huge pop-up notification validated everyone's concerns. It didn't mention anything about the actual intent of the bill, which is to force a sale and allow TikTok to continue operating. It just mischaracterized the bill and then told everyone to take political action based on that mischaracterization. I'm amazed someone thought this was a good idea, but it proved the concern isn't hypothetical, it's real. They will misinform people on a huge scale and then use that to manipulate political behavior. Now I watched that video and I liked it. I think that he covered the issue evenly. He took China as an adversary very seriously. I like the fact that he also talked about our own social media companies and the fact that they're also sucking up our data. I think that he could have said that our own government is adversarial to us because they're taking our data. But all in all, I think that was a good explanation of the problem. But people were already very skeptical about the way that he covered it. One person on Twitter said, so what you're saying is that the US government wants to be able to influence and spy on people who use TikTok. I like how he tries to act if our government is any better. We literally spy on everyone. Somebody else said, you're just another party line politician. You're no different than the ones you critique on your TikTok account. Now, shortly after Jeff released this video, the news came out that the House had passed this bill, like he talked about in his video. And TikTok users and his fans were quick to notice that Jeff was one of the 352 congressmen who voted in favor of this bill. And his audience was deeply unhappy. Like, I cannot tell you how many videos I have seen calling him out over the past four days. Here's one as an example. I don't think TikTok is going to be banned. Not Jeff Jackson voting yes for the TikTok ban and then coming on TikTok to try and use the Mr. Rogers voice to tell people, I don't think the TikTok ban is going to pass. I mean, that creator is not wrong. He is very much Mr. Rogers. That's a good point. But somebody commented and said, I'm going to be honest. This kind of hurt my feelings. I really thought that Jeff Jackson was a stand-up guy. I encourage people to vote for him. I'm disappointed. Somebody else said, it's a sobering reality that if it were not for TikTok, the name Jeff Jackson would be utterly inconsequential to the wider populace. I mean, like one guy even wrote a song about how angry he is at Jeff Jackson. I don't think TikTok is gonna be banned. Hey Jeff, I just wanted to show you this really cool song I wrote. It's called, The Bastard in the Kitchen. The bastard in the kitchen used to sing a lovely song and all the town would come around and all would sing along. The manner that he sang, it seemed that he could tell no lies. It's quite a feat that none could see the shit behind his eyes. I honestly think I should start playing this for every politician that does something wrong or corrupted. Bastard in the kitchen. Not a bad song. Nothing we can do right now but sing a different song. I mean, you get the gist of it, dragging his name until he's gone. People have been trying to cancel him for the past 48 hours. And it's funny to me that people were shocked about a politician doing something shady in their opinion, because at the end of the day, no matter how much you like Jeff Jackson or trust him, he still is a politician. So it's to be expected. Now, to give Jeff Jackson some credit, and I think you guys know where I'm going with this, there is some nuance here that has been overlooked by the mob on TikTok. Technically, Jeff voting in favor of this bill is not him voting to ban TikTok outright. We talked about this last week. We covered the bill in more depth if you want to go watch that video for some extra context. But this bill that the House just passed, it would force a Chinese company called ByteDance that owns TikTok to sell to an American company within the next six months or face a ban from America. And that verbiage of facing a ban is what caused the firestorm online in the first place. And as we all saw, Jeff Jackson acknowledged that in his first video. Somebody commented and said that is not what he said in the full video. He didn't say it wouldn't pass. He said that even if it passes, TikTok will be sold because numerous companies will step up with dump trucks of cash to buy it. And the other important note is that Jeff didn't say that he was going to vote no and advocate against this whole thing, even though he sort of implied it in the first five seconds, according to people online. But he said that he did not believe a ban would actually happen once it got to the Senate. 
That is incredibly important context. And then in the next two minutes, he went on to explain why he does believe that there is actually a security risk. So if you watched the whole video, you would see that maybe this is a little bit blown out of proportion. But his audience is angry because they thought that he was gonna stand up for them and what they wanted, and that he voted in a way that could possibly usher in this potential ban if TikTok does not sell. But some people were willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. One person said, I still agree with Jeff Jackson. I do not think he has fallen off the wagon or any of this. Listen to what he has to say. He is still the awesome person that we were all rooting for. But people like this were a small minority and the pressure got to be crazy. He was losing hundreds of thousands of followers. His comment section was swarmed with people saying, who paid you? Why are you doing this? You're letting us down. So he deleted the original video and then he uploaded an apology. Of course, here it is. I apologize. I did not handle this situation well from top to bottom. And that is why I have been completely roasted on this app over the last 48 hours. And I get it. If I were in your shoes, I would probably feel the same way. I would see someone who used this app to build a following and then appears to have voted against it. And I would be upset. And I would feel like I deserved more of an explanation. So here goes. I like this app. I've been able to reach a lot of people and hear directly from them. And it's been great. I'm also in Congress, and I've been a part of some briefings about this app that were genuinely alarming. When I was reading the bill, the part I agreed with was the part that tries to force a sale, because I figured this would just be a better app if we didn't have to worry about the stuff that comes with it being potentially controlled by an adversarial government. The part True. I didn't like was the part that threatens a ban. Half the country is on this app. It has become a force for good in the lives of millions of people. So I weighed those two things, and the reason I voted for it was because I genuinely believe the chance of a ban is practically zero. On the one hand, I have information about this app that isn't public. On the other, the language of the bill was going to upset millions of people. My thinking was I could reconcile those two things by just making a video that said, hey, here's the situation. And that was a total disaster. I think that his video was solid. I think that he did the best that he could in this situation because it is a very nuanced subject as basically every bill that goes through our government is. They're always like chock full of random vague things that they've thrown in. They use language that many lay people do not understand. We have no idea that they're even passing things at 2 a.m. on Zoom calls. So I think that he was actually trying to share that information, but because TikTok has, you know, the attention span of a pea, they only watched the first five seconds and then everything else just went out the window. So I don't really think it's his fault here. I think it's mainly the mob. Some of you have said, I must have been bought by somebody. Well, that is exactly why I don't take any corporate PAC money. Not from TikTok, not from Meta, not from any corporation. That doesn't change the fact that I screwed this up. I did. I apologize, and I will keep you boasted. And this will come as a shock to none of you, I'm sure, but this apology did not change anything. That's why I always say, just don't apologize because it's only going to give them more power over you. They called him groveling. They said it was weak. They said it didn't change anything. One person commented and said, so instead of it being owned by a non-US company that might sell our data, they have to sell it to a US company like Google or Amazon that is 100% already selling our data. It's an important note. I'm very conflicted on this bill. I don't think either solution is great. The US government, I don't trust with our data. The Chinese government, I also don't trust with our data. It's not great regardless. Now, it's also worth noting that in that apology, he references insider information about the app and its security concerns to rationalize why he agreed with moving the bill forward. But if that insider information that only he and the rest of Congress knows about is so incriminating, then why is he still on the app? And why is Biden still on the app campaigning every single day? Like, come on, people. It does not make sense. I do think that he's being a little bit hypocritical there, as Biden is. Now, I think the key takeaway here is that politicians are going to politician. You should not idolize them or completely trust any of them. Like, even the relatable ones who makes videos at his kitchen table. Now, on the bright side, a good takeaway that we can have from this is that it was refreshing to see how much Gen Z and young people online care about consistency and honesty in politics. And on both sides of the aisle, it seems like they are fed up with the games and corruption in DC. And that is a very good thing. They should be fed up. We should all be fed up with the games. And I wish they would take that desire for consistency into their values and their principles, because we know they are not often consistent there. But this is an important first step. But back to the point of the video, even though I don't agree with Representative Jeff Jackson on every single policy, obviously he's a Democrat, I don't believe that he majorly effed up here. I think that this was a wild overreaction. I think that he was trying to do the best that he could. And if we're trying to pinpoint some hypocrisy, I think it's that he's simply still posting on the app. Well, guys, I hope you liked that video. Make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel if you have not already. And if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and on Snapchat and on TikTok. See you guys next time. Bye.